Hi, everybody. Casey Zander here. And alongside joining me today is one of the godfathers of men and strong men and masculinity himself the one and only Elliot Hulse. Our whole goal today is to up-level the conversation and really maybe even raise your intellect a little bit so that way you can make the best decisions for yourself as a man. So Elliot, before I kind of go deep and talk about you know the topic for today, do you want to introduce yourself or maybe give guys a once-over if they're a subscriber to my channel and have not yet watched anything from you? Sure. I'm a strength coach by trade. I was a competitive strongman, and I opened a gym called Strength Camp back in 2007. About the same time YouTube came out, I started making YouTube videos about the workouts I was doing in the gym. One of the things that, as a strength coach, you may experience is that at the end of the workouts, young men have questions outside of the gym. I really enjoyed hanging out after the workouts and talking to the guys about life, you know, the parents, school, career, and of course, girls. And so that kind of spirit uh enjoined itself upon the youtube experience and so the same type of questions were coming in even though i'm teaching you how to lift weights i'm getting questions about life like hey elliot what do you think about this and that so just to be transparent i'm an expert in growing stronger getting stronger my mission is to make men strong again but it has evolved from merely lifting weights which is great uh to all aspects of life and i apparently because of the size of my audience have some useful things to say in that regard cool awesome i love it well in that case we'll move forward with today's topic and me and elliot connected through instagram and i actually asked him this question about a week or two ago and I, he shed some really deep light on it because even myself with having thousands of students enrolled in my product and whatnot, I constantly come back to the question that I search for answers for. And the question is, or is men or men and women for that matter, are humans, are men monogamous by default? Is it in male nature to be monogamous by default? And I have some follow-up questions that I'm going to ask Elliot from this, but Elliot, what's your take on that? If we just go broad for a second. Well, my take on it is that whatever feels good is what we're going to be drawn to, right? If I can have more pizza, more cake, more beer, more sex, more anything that delights my, gives me pleasure, then of course I'm going to want it. And so if you want to control a people, this comes straight from E. Michael Jones in his book, uh, Libido Dominandi, where he talks about how sexual liberation is actually sexual slavery. Uh, he mentions how when you give people what they want, essentially, you know, more pizza, more cake, right? Uh, they're more easily manipulated. And the whole sexual revolution, which is not new, it's a, it's a, it's a tactic that has been used for forever. The leaders of a culture that want it to be submissive uh, give leeway to vices. And so wherever there are constraints, you know, because constraints are what makes a man a man. Boundaries are what makes a man a man. A man knows himself by that which he will not do as much as that which he will do. Uh, he's much more easily manipulated. So is it natural to want more of good tasting, feeling stuff? Yeah, hell yeah, it is. But is it right? Is it in our best interest? Uh, my opinion is no. Uh, just like as a strength coach, I don't think it is in your best interest to eat a whole box of donuts just because it tastes good. And as it relates to intersexual dynamics, marriage, relationships, uh, I don't, I'm of the opinion that it is not best to be out there eating boxes, <laughs> lots and lots, lots and lots of boxes. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> cool. I like that answer. I think that gives a lot of clarity. What, what, what do you think the biggest difference is between your take versus some, because you have to remember that we have hundreds of thousands or millions of men following the practicalities of what you just described. And we also have hundreds of thousands or millions of men following red pill nature and quote unquote plate spinning. And I think men are confused as to what masculinity is. There are some men where they feel very weak if they commit to a woman. And I think it's because there's other content creators or there's people who shame them for that. 
And on the flip side, there's some men who their intuition tells them that it's not masculine if they approach and if they have all of these women either. So first off, my question is, why do you feel like there's such a pull left or right as if men can't make the decision for themselves? And do you personally feel that the red pill practicalities for men to do that and get experience and collect notches under the belt is good for some, but bad for others? Or what's your whole take on that? Well, when it comes to that struggle, that pull, it's always a pull between our divine and our fleshly nature. I mean, that's basically with every question that we have in our lives. Is this of my higher nature? Is this of order? That's really the best way to look at it. Is this of order or is this of chaos? Most of what's of our fleshly nature is of chaos because if we allow the beast to run the show, it's going to lick and, and eat and do anything that it wants to do because we're it, or animal in nature in that way. But there's a special thing about man. There's a, there's a unique quality that's given to humankind, mankind, and that is of divine order. And for every civilization to have th uh, flourished, uh, there has been religion, there have been mythology, there has been uh, boundaries by which and codes of ethics by which we've discovered or has been revealed to us as a better way to live. Um, had we just followed our base nature, we wouldn't be living in civilization. We would just be running rampant like animals, right? We'd be doing the same thing that the animals are doing. So uh, my opinion is that we, we always strive for order. We strive for divine order. We strive for doing the right thing, even if it feels contrary to what my dick or tongue wants. I see. So one of the points too that I wanted to address from when Elliot and I, Elliot and I talked, you know, a week or two ago was he said, humans by default are essentially beasts, right? With no boundaries, but it, it doesn't necessarily make you weaker if you commit to a woman or if you search for some sort of divine truth, would you say correct? Because what you're essentially accepting is that there is a higher form, a higher being, and also some sort of intellect that you have to look beyond, correct? Yeah, and the best way to describe it is order. The word, and so this boils down to really the difference between uh, the world we live in, which is a matriarchy, it's ruled by feminis, feminism, and men are effeminate, and a patriarchy, which is a world of order that literally means, patriarchy literally means father's rule. The word father, right, where we get, is where we get, uh, the word father comes from pattern, pater, paternity, things of this nature, patriotism even, uh, is all about order. And so it is very manly to be of order, to be uh, guided by boundaries and the code of ethic. Our ancestors under, understood this greatly uh, to such a degree that when a young man would become, go from being a boy to being a man, there was a process of initiation by which cross-culturally, meaning every culture everywhere as anthropologists have studied it, had a movement away from the world of the mother for the boy, right? They would strip him away from the mother. They would strip him away from, com which means stripping him away from comfort. I like to think the word mother comes from material also, matter, mother, material, sensuality, comfort, uh, all things that keep us soft. There's a movement away from those things that keep us soft, that keep us weak, that keep us tethered to mother and matter. And then there's a movement towards the father. They call it atonement with the father. Once again, if we're talking about a movement away from central nature to a, to a, a, a movement from central nature, uh, sorry, COVID, to um, <laughs> pattern, <laughs> to spirit, uh, it always, and it has always included rites of passage and thus a new sense of meaning, a new sense of being, a new sense of responsibility and authority in that man before he goes back into society. This is how a man becomes a man. Now, if you're still stuck in effeminacy, meaning needing comfort, needing uh, sensual pleasure, uh, material indulgences, you're still behaving like a mama's boy essentially. Mm -hmm. But when right. you become stoic, when you become strong, when you have boundaries, when you can say no, when you can stand up for what's right, even if it doesn't feel good, 
Now you're acting and behaving like a man. So with just that example alone, you can make whatever judgment you want, but the fact is that if you're running around dipping your dick in all these chicks, essentially you're behaving like a mama's boy who's addicted to pleasure, especially in our culture as it is right now. Now, I love to think about how things were, right? For example, um, and how maybe they're explained in the Bible with regard to uh, polygamy, right? Like these alpha males, like think about like Solomon, alpha males who had like lots and lots of wives, right? And I'm sure that worked at the time yeah. with the power structures at the time, right? He's the richest man in the world. He's got tons of power. He's a, he's a, he's a high status, the highest status man. And thus, lots of women want to be a part of that kingdom. To say that we should live that way today also means that we should live in a, a, a particular... Now, people love democracy. People love the fact that we're all, quote unquote, equal. But if we were to eliminate that so-called equality and allow alpha males to be alpha males, most of the dudes, 80% of the dudes running around will have zero women. And 20% of the guys will have 100% of the women because they will all be attracted to that alpha male. I think that attitude, I think that way of being, again, is natural. I don't necessarily think that it's productive for the day and age that we live in right now. In fact, it would cause a lot of problems for a lot of people. Okay, right. I got you. Why do you personally believe that these fundamental roots of masculinity and rites of passage and order has been lost? Because it's a battle between good and evil. Uh, it, it, it's, it's timeless. This is a timeless battle between order and chaos. And I think we just see it most poignantly now here in the West, post-World War II, post-World the Wars, uh, Bolshevik Revolution. And then the West stood for order for so many generations. The West was, you know, is, 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 is the superpower of the world. However you want it, the conquerors, the winners, the leaders of the world for so many years. And so the only way they, and it was based on Christendom. Most of our ethics came from the Judeo-Christian ethic. That's the way we chose to live our, la live our lives, um, you know, for the past 2,000 two years. And it allowed us to be, to flourish as a society. Two things needed to happen in order to destroy the West. And, you know, they're winning. You have to de-Christianize the West and you have to destroy the family. Both of those things are an attack on masculinity because to de-Christianize the West means to remove the father, the spiritual father that we sought to, to for, you know, for leadership and for guidance and for morals and for boundaries. You have to destroy any sense that that patriarchal figure has any ruling over our lives, God the Father. And at the same time, he also understood that you had to capture the minds of the children. In order to capture the minds of the children, you have to destroy the family. And the way you destroy the family is by chopping off its heads. And the head of the family traditionally has been the father, the man. So the way you do that culturally, right, is not with bombs and bullets, right? They're not coming after us with guns and, and removing the fathers from the home and making the women and children dependent on this new state or this new government, like maybe you've seen them do in like the times of, uh, of like Genghis Khan. Instead, you emasculate the men. Women need a leader. That's just nature. Women will follow something or someone. And if it's not men, it's going to be, well, let me put it this way. If it's not their husbands, it's going to be their boss at job, at their job. And if it's not their boss at their job, it's going to be Uncle Sam, the government. You right. That's what I'm saying? Yeah. So that has been the process by which we've gotten to emasculated men and then women who are completely deluded. So to kind of land this plane to the, <laughs> I get what you're saying, to, to land this plane though to the typical guy right now, let's say ages 20 to 30, who's dealt with modern women, who's dealt with the imbalances with his own masculinity, who doesn't even necessarily know ways he can pick up the leadership of his own life, why that's so needed, and if he even has any value. What is some tangible things you think the average everyday Joe Blow can take away from this, can take away from your message and can put into play or into action right now so they can gain clarity with their own life? Uh, I happen to think that there's two righteous paths for men. There's the path of the monk, which is MGTOW, in my opinion, especially if it's done in the right way. 
a lot of times I see these guys on YouTube and so so forth. Their MGTOW movement is bred out of anger. And I understand no. it's reactionary. Right. But there's also a, if you can cultivate it, there's a strong philosophical meaning behind it. And if you can get into the roots of that, you can see how the, the monks and the, the the leaders of the early Christian church, these guys, they they left society. They wouldn't even look at women. Even to this day, the men on, the, on Mount Athos, where the Orthodox Christians live, they don't, women are not allowed up there. You just, if you're a woman, you don't come. So the point is that these are men that have decided the cultivation of my spiritual, the, my soul, my philosophical, however you would look at it, is much more important than the, indul than the indulgence in my carnal nature, plus contributing to a dis distorted society. That's one option. I believe that it's a valid option, but I also see the other side of the coin as a wealth of worthy option, one that will require that you pick up your sword and your shield quite a bit more and battle for what's good, and that is of marriage. You have monk and you have marriage. And the reason why marriage works, the reason why marriage is important is because a society is it flourishes based on the strength of the family. And you can make any argument that you want against marriage as an institution as it stands today with the state being our overlord, which gives it a whole lot of uh, negative associations. And, I, and I, I won't argue against that. But if we are to retain our value as a culture, as a country, as men, we have to build strong families again. And that requires what? Returning to the natural order where men are the leaders. She comes from us. We come from the father. We are in charge. We are the leaders. And is that a is that an archaic way of thinking because it comes from a 2,000-year-old book or 4,000-year-old book? Maybe so, but the fruits, you will know by the fruits. Mm -hmm. It has worked. It has worked for 2,000 years plus. It's worked forever. In fact, I did research on uh, the, the history of, ma of marriage, particularly in the West, and even the barbarians, you know, the quote unquote unwashed barbarians that lived north of the Romans, they took wives, they took individual wives, and they were serious about their commitment or their, their, their monogamy in that way, because they understood that it made for better societies, it made for better families. This whole idea, and I love, you know, modernism likes to take quote unquote old stuff, uh, or, or like, you know, they pretend like they love science so much, but they usually love it when it's convenient. And this, and I've heard a lot of people try to liken us onto the bonobo. You ever hear this? Like, I, there's this book that's out there that a lot of the, you know, um, red pill guys, I forget the name of the book, but it's all about how we're bonobos. And mm -hmm. that the bonobo is, doesn't, they don't have monogamy, but the, trim, the chimps do. The bonobo has no uh, monogamy. Don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't sell down with one woman, but listen to how they live and check this out. It's the funniest thing because it, it resembles our degenerate culture. First of all, the male bonobo never knows his child. He screws and nobody knows the children. Thus, they have no authority in the tribe because they don't know who's theirs. The women, the females know who's theirs. So they live in a matriarchy. The women are in charge. And the women, the female bonobos, right? Because if you want to use this as an example of how humans should be, the females are in charge. And you know what the, what the males do? Oh, While sad. the women are running around, uh, you know, be, being the leaders, the, 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 the male bonobos masturbate. They ah. sit around and masturbate. And so Jack Donovan has a great book called The Way of Men, where he really elaborates on this dichotomy between the chimp and the bonobo. And, uh, and he calls our culture uh, the bonobo masturbation culture. I see. That's very interesting. Well, to conclude that, as far as where men are at and <laughs> the, the pleasure that they are seeking and what men have became and what men are, I think there's a lot of golden nuggets within all of that. And I think there's golden nuggets for what men have became and why it, why we are lost and why we're at a turning point where I think it's critical that a man does pick up his own sword. Do you have any final points you want to make or have you concluded a lot of your thoughts and free flowing ability to speak? <laughs> well, then what do you do, right? Yeah. What do you do, monk, monk or marriage? Because I'm I'm utterly against hookup culture because it's unhealthy for men and women. 
Uh -huh. uh, it leads to, like I said, all kinds of addiction. It's bred from addiction and it's associated with addiction as well as easy manipulation. And you and you see this manipulation, not just from the top down, because like I said, if you study libido dominante, you see how this is a movement from the oligarchy to suppress and manipulate the masses, but you see how men become pussy whipped. They right. do think, buy, behave, and live their entire lives for what? For pussy. And yep. that's no way for a man to live because a woman is an addition to his life. So I'm, I, I'm utterly against hookup culture for men and women and for women i mean the the, the the negative side effects are so obvious and so paramount these women can't pair bond anymore they're killing their babies faster than you can say how, how do we get how do we get male or how, excuse me how do, how do we get women on board with this and the the real question is compliance i see so many men you know i've worked with hundreds of married men throughout the years for example and the one thing that i come across time and time again is they say casey i want to be a good leader i am a good leader i'm stepping up and i'm leading she won't let me lead and because she won't let him lead now notice two things are wrong with this number one it implies she's the leader number two it also implies she's the authority in the final say whether he can or can't since his hands are tied Right. He, he can verbally try to exercise that, but he can't actually do anything because we have rules and we have ways things are set. What 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 do we do to get the other end of the spectrum, which is women on board with this? So that way, not only do they have strong leaders, but why do you feel it's so tough for them to realize this is also in their best interest? Well, of course, women have been fed a whole lot of lies that have made them more miserable and has destroyed families. But in terms of what's required from us is that we have to take their power away. And the woman has their power. There's only one thing that a woman has that, was that they can too. lord over this. Huh? I said I knew that was coming, too. Yeah. Yeah. Sex. Sex. Yeah. Stop having sex with these women. Because the minute you give away your sex, you give away your power. Then you need her. One of the things that I tell the men in my program who they struggle with a particular woman and they're not, they, they, they're addicted to her, of course, but they're addicted to her love. I tell her, I tell them, stop having sex with her. Stop having sex with her. And you know what happens when you stop having sex with her? Two major things happen. Number one, of course, you take her power away and that really will bother her. And then number two, you take your sex glasses off. When you take your six glasses off, these guys, they get married to the women that are giving them problems. The, the reason why they got married to a woman that gives them problems because they had sex goggles on when they said, I do. Yep. Stop having sex with her. And then you'll be able to say, wait a second, what am I doing with you? What value are you bringing to my life? How are you making my life better besides allowing me to blow my load? And I, I ask this to guys a lot of times. And I say, just really think about it. Write it down. What other value does she bring to your life besides that you get to put your they can't figure it out. Well, I'll tell you this. If you have an abundance mentality, stop chasing sex and start looking for character and dignified women who are willing explicitly to follow your lead. I told this to my wife. I didn't know what I was doing when I was a kid. I started dating my wife when we were 14 years old. Let's tell you a little bit about me. I'm a weirdo. But I remember being 16 years old, right? And I, I, there was no red pill back then. I wasn't on Reddit and I wasn't watching Casey Zander on YouTube. But I remember <laughs> saying to her, Listen, I'm going to live this kind of life, you know, I because I had big dreams, you know, I had a big head and a big ego. And I'm like, I'm going to live an amazing life and I'm going to travel and a, my life is going to be a roller coaster. I would love to have you come along with me, but it's my ride. You're riding passenger seat. And of course, a 16 year old girl. And, you know, what did I know as a kid? She's like, right. yeah, OK, yeah, sure. I'll go with you wherever you go. But she showed she showed that she was true. And so that's why I am where I am right now, because I very early on took the steering wheel and let her know, I'm going to take really good care of you. I'm going to do everything I can for you. I love doing everything for my wife. I want to give my wife everything. I think that's a male's nature. I think the nature of the masculine is, I think the nature of the sexes are embodied in their sex organs. The nature of the man is to fill himself up so much that he can ejaculate life into the world. He right. has so much that he wants to give. A man is full of love. Right. Love flows down because the man is the one that gives the love. The woman is the one that gives the respect. That's the way, that's the order. I don't want, I don't need love from my wife. I love my wife. I need respect from my wife so that I can continue to, in good faith, give all my love to her. And so the man is 
like I said, the penis, it, it, it becomes erect, it becomes strong, and it wants to give the woman, the female, and you know how many women could even do this right now? Most women don't even know how to have orgasm. They, they are supposed to relax. And receive. Open up, yield, receive, and be raptured by the strength of their man. I tell you, my wife has an amazing life. She's, she's smiling all day long because she gets everything she wants from me because she opens up and yields to my power. I love it. This is awesome. So if any of my viewers wanted to get in touch with you, right? I know that you repetitively, I see on Instagram, you're full of testimonials and transformations helping changing men's lives with the king's transformation as we wrap up can you discuss what that is all about and how you even created that and why you created it i created it because there's a great need for strength in men we become so weak we become so soft and i have been blessed i i recognize this in myself so i don't speak with great arrogance or i try not to anymore because i'm very very fortunate but I had a strong father. I come from a strong family, have a strong example. I was raised to be a father. And as a result, I li in living in a world where our biggest challenge is fatherlessness. Not necessarily that the fathers aren't there, which they're not, but even if they are there, they're weak. They're weak men. So I don't take it for granted that I'm a father figure to perhaps millions of young men worldwide because they just don't have it at home. Right. And so I've made YouTube videos for, you know, the past 15 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. And rather than putting all my eggs in that basket, continuing, I wanted to go deeper with the men that are influenced by me. So I created a, a, a coaching program where essentially we get together every week and we talk on things of this uh, of this nature. And of course, there's lessons that you go through in order to reclaim your masculine frame. And that's really what it's all about, because if we're going to turn this boat around, we can't wait for women to do it. You know, that's one of the things a lot of guys do. They complain, they complain, they complain about women. But it's like, it was not their fault. They're reflecting our weakness. The minute men stand up and listen, women will tell you they don't want you to be strong. Don't listen to what women tell you. Look at, look at the way they behave. They act like they want to be in charge, but really they hate weak men. They don't want to be in charge. They want you to step up and take the reins and say, hey, follow me. Right. And so this is the type of attitude that we're trying to cultivate in the program. Awesome. I love it. If any of you want access to that, I'll put a link to Elliot's channel as well as Elliot's link to that transformation journey and program below. I genuinely hope that this video gave you guys some sort of clarity and focus in your life. If you like this video, hit the like button, comment and subscribe. Hopefully we will return again one day for another collaboration and we will see you in the next one.